Hey guys, okay, I'll have to see. All right, hey guys, maybe next time here. So uh, I am playing a little bit of Pioneer, just finishing out kind of this inaugural season of Pioneer as the format ends and uh, Theros kind of is going to transition into uh, Ikoria. So this is, I think, uh, at the end of the season, certainly one of the top decks in Pioneer. Uh, this is the Sultai mid-range list, um, Swedish Sultai, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Joel Larson obviously originally piloted this deck, um, won the European Players Tour, and since then um, it's had a lot of success online, and uh, really this is what I think is probably the ultimate version of the deck, the best version. Uh, Bettina, you know, great MTGO player. Um, MTGO Legend played this to a top 8 finish at, in a super qualifier, and this is basically, I think, probably the final version of the list. Um, the mana base, you have your Fable, I mean, you have your basic uh, land. With Akoria, we have Tri-Lands coming out, so that's going to definitely push this deck in different directions. You have Fable Passages, we need these to go to the graveyard to fuel um, kind of some of our graveyard shenanigans going on. We have 5 basic lands, we have Two forests, two island, um, and then down here a swamp. Uh, we have our watery graves, our overgrown tombs. We have a one of Ipnu Rivulet. This is a piece of tech that started showing up in a lot of blue base decks uh, after the first player's tour. And this is just a way to deal with Inverter. Say they go to like uh, a small amount of cards in their library, you just play Inverter, and then you can mill the rest of their library out. Uh, as far as like the deck goes, we have uh, Traverse the Uvenwald. This can help with our mana, or it can tutor up some one-ofs that are pretty good. Emrakul, Walking Ballista, uh, Ishkanah, Scarab God. Uh, it can also tutor up like a removal spell via Tireless Trackers, or I mean via Murderous Riders. So one of the reasons we play the Murderous Riders is because uh, it, Traverse the Uvenwald actually lets us get it and find a removal spell, which is pretty sweet. Um, we also have our Fatal Pushes, our Thought Seizes, three Jace Friends Prodigy. This helps get stuff in our graveyard. Uh, it's also just a super strong two-play. We have another tutorable card in Scavenging Ooze just to help with graveyard strategies. Two Abrupt Decays. Uh, we also have uh, the Tireless Trackers, the Uros, um, kind of the namesake graveyard card of the deck. Joel Larson said that, you know, you always want four. It's the best card. One E2 Extinction, kind of a fourth Murderous Rider in a way. Um, two Ashiok. This card has been surprisingly strong. One the Scarab God. One Ishkana. Now, Walking Belief is kind of interesting because it actually counts twice for Delirium because it's both a creature and an artifact. Um, it also counts for Delirium on Emrakul. So that's kind of our main deck, what we're trying to do here. Um, our sideboard is pretty cool. So our sideboard, um, we have Mystical Dis Disputes against blue decks, Disdainful Strokes against decks that are looking to cast big stuff, Languishes for aggressive decks, Noxious Grass. Then we have two Unravel the Ethers, um, two Unmortigo against like combo decks, against the Mirror, stuff like that, Abrupt Decays, and then Dampening Spheres. Uh, this card obviously just crushing the uh, through the breach deck, or not through the breach, the uh, breach combo deck. So, underworld breach, that being. So, this is the deck. Anyways, guys, we are not going to take an Emrakul out because we'd like to play with that card. We're just going to hop into a league really quickly. And uh, we are, I already started this league. So, currently, I believe I am 1 0, and I am. So, we're just going to get started here, and we will see how it goes. I only have one trophy in this league. I haven't actually played a ton of Pioneer this season. So, been playing more standard on uh, Arena, just looking to qualify for events.
All right, awesome guys. So we are here um, with a little Saltai mid. I was gonna say we jam this, and I think we're gonna actually keep this hand pretty quickly here. Um, we have two thought seizes, a traverse, which is our second land, uh, a Jace, and then Seder Wife Wayfinder to go find even more mana. So I think we're gonna actually keep this, and we're probably just gonna overgrown tomb here and pick up an island to give us access to all three colors. Um, play the Jace Ringe Prodigy on two. It could also I also actually don't mind going underground tomb, or I mean, yeah, underground tomb untapped, because he mulliganed here, so I don't mind going underground sea untapped, thought sees you, my turn, play traverse, get another swamp, and then thought sees him again, which is, I think, what I'm going to do here. If he didn't mulligan, I might consider doing it the other way, but I think here... Actually like this play a little more we'll just take his one drop here he seems to be on a little bit of an aggressive red green strategy so i'll just take his one drop let's see what he has in his hand so he plays his mountain so i like to keep the cards he plays over here just so i can kind of keep track of what's going on and since he's ooh, so we do draw a watery grave here this is kind of interesting because we could I, I don't really want to take two more life here because he is on an aggressive deck. So I'd rather just, I think, Thought Seize him again. Take another card, and then next turn I can Traverse, get a land, and play this. So, hmm. I think I'd rather take the Galia here and just leave him with the Wild Slash. Oops, sorry, my boss is emailing me. Let me just put that out. Okay. So, here I'm just going to... Huh. This is kind of interesting because I know he has the Wild Slash, and I'd prefer... So, you played a Stomping Ground. I prefer for my guy not to get wild slashed here, so I am going to just Seder Wayfinder. Let's see if we can pick up what we pick up land-wise. So I could pick up the Tomb or the Fabled Passage here. Huh. What would I prefer? If I Tomb, this gives me one, two in the graveyard. So we'd have three create three types. But if I tomb untapped, I can actually play traverse. And then this is one, two, three, four. So I can actually, so I'll, I'm going to explain why I was counting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually play traverse the Uvenwald and get an island. The reason being that it's going to let me cast my Uro next turn. So I think this is correct because that should probably end the game here. So let's just get this, and then next turn we're going to be able to cast our Uro, which is just the best card against these aggressive decks. So, yeah, he'll just concede. Okay, perfect. So we're going to move to sideboarding now. Um, in sideboarding against these aggressive decks, um, our deck is really, really well set up against them. I don't like Emrakul. Um, it, it it's never going to come to a point, typically these games, where Emrakul is great. Um, I want to probably just board in the two Languishes, and then I'm going to want to board in the two Abrupt Decays. I don't know how green his deck is, so I don't really want the Noxious Grasp, and I don't imagine it's green enough that I would ever want it. So I'm going to board out the Emrakul for sure. Now, I'm okay boarding out Tireless Tracker. This is more for controlling matchups. And then I would not. I don't mind boarding out some number of thought seizes here, um, because they do cost me a little life when I play them, and especially on the draw, they're a little less good. They also do give me a little inter interaction early. So I mean, I could cut uh, like a Scarab God and an Ashiok over two thought seizes, which isn't like terrible. The reason you don't is typically against these aggressive decks. Um, the later in the game you go, the more able you are to uh, stabilize. And sometimes a threat like this just wins you the game on the spot. So 
I am going to try to board like this. Eh, I could board back into Thought Seizes. I don't know. I could board out like one Ashiok here in favor of a third Thought Seize. I don't mind that too much. Okay, let me just, you know. Cool. So our opponent is going to be on the play here. And our hand isn't great. He did mulligan. Our hand does have an Uro. Um, and a Walking Ballista and a Scavenging Ooze. So I'll keep it. It's not really what we want in these matchups. We do kind of want, uh, like, Fatal Pushes. I wouldn't even mind a Thought Seize. Um, like, an Abrupt Decay. Something like that. But because they mulligan and Scavenging Ooze and Uro are both two of the better cards in the matchup, I don't mind keeping this hand too much. Okay. Let's see what he leads on. A Bomat Courier. So that card's actually a little problematic because it does, uh, like, if I don't answer it right away, it does get bigger. But luckily, on, on two, I should be able to just answer it. Okay, so here I do draw a third land, which is nice. I'm just going to play my Breeding Pool tapped and pass the turn. I don't really want to take damage, and next turn I would like to just play Walking Ballista and kill this Beaumont Courier. And what I can do is play the Beaumont Courier, play this tapped, play this untapped on three, and then play Uro on turn three. So I'd rather just kill this here. Him having a second one is very annoying for us. Luckily, we should be able to beat it, but it is kind of annoying. We'll take two here. Huh. So, here, let me just play Blooming Marsh, and I will be, uh, oh, who's calling me? Sorry. I'll play this for one, and I'll just pass. The reason I don't do it right away is because what I want to happen here is I want him to attack. I want to block one of the Beaumont Carriers and shoot the other one in combat and save myself a point of damage from a life perspective. He could pop and trade his hand here, but I imagine that's not going to be the case. So let's let that happen. Let's let this happen let's move to blockers and i will just block here okay and now before damage happens we are going to remove our counter and we are going to shoot the boat mop courier belief is something you have to be very careful about on mtgo i found it can be kind of annoying to utilize I've definitely shot my own Ballista before. Sure. He didn't deal me any damage, which is pretty good. Okay. Seder, Fire Drinker. He looks very angry, that guy. Ooh, a Fatal Push. Interesting, interesting. So here, I'm just going to play Uro. Blue, green, black. That's Uro. Sure. I'm going to play a Bree or a Water Grave untapped here. Uh, the reason why is it lets me play Fatal Push. So I'll play this untapped, and then this way um, I'm able to Fatal Push. And I'm actually probably just going to get rid of the Beaumont Courier here. I don't really want him to, like, get cards. It's kind of a backdoor way that I would lose this game. And I'd rather trade uh, one card for... I'd rather trade, uh, like, one damage for the Beaumont Courier, because it is a backdoor way I lose. I think I'm incredibly favored in this game right now, and so I'd rather not put myself in a position where I could lose through something stupid like that. So we're just going to go ahead and play the Wayfinder here. That's fine. It actually does enable Uro next turn, so... I'm very happy about that. Let's just play a Scavenging Ooze, and I will pay two life here um, just to start growing this Ooze a little bit. 
It also provides just a blocker because this requires two to pump it. So if he doesn't draw another mana, this does provide a pump of blocker. And then next turn, I'll be able to just reanimate Uro and we do win the match. So anyways, uh, he kind of, our opponent was certainly unfortunate there. Um, so we won really easily, but I do think this is a very favored matchup. So I don't think we got like super, super lucky to win it. Our next couple draws weren't that good, but we would have just reanimated the uh, Uro either way. But anyways, guys, that was uh, Salte versus Mono Red. I will see you back for the next round. 2-0 so far in the league. Thanks.